Hey YouTube, Nick here from Weekly Gaming Recap, bringing you all the hottest stories from around the web for October 11th, 2013. You'll no doubt notice uh, Carrie's not here this week. She's off on a little vacation. So let's get right into it. We'll start with next gen news. Um, Xbox One DVR basically is going to record all your achievements. So no need to wonder if you need capture equipment or anything like that and you'll be able to share them provided you have Xbox Live Gold. Um, I didn't see anything about uh, not recording if you weren't a Gold member, just that you couldn't share it. So it's kind of odd, but maybe it'll record it and you can play it back to your family if you don't have Xbox Live Gold or something like that. Um, the internet, however, blew up when AdAge posted a story that Microsoft was going to somehow use the Kinect to gather data and show you ads. Kind of like um, if you were drinking a Mountain Dew and maybe it would show you an ad for Doritos or something like that. Um, basically, they said the statement was taken out of context. All they're doing is linking Xbox One to portable devices and second screen apps like Smart Glass, uh, like iOS, like your iPhone. And another report came out that said this goes a little deeper and both stories are kind of true. Um, basically, Microsoft is looking to create something like a super cookie, which if you've gone around the internet, you'll know that a cookie basically tracks you and tells advertisers where you've been, uh, where you're coming from. So if you go to Coke's website, it'll put a cookie in there if you visited it and then they can track where you went from there. Um, I'm really oversimplifying it, but basically, you know, cookies are there so advertisers can display targeted ads to you. So if you go to uh, a shopping website like Amazon and you look up certain items when you leave that website and you go to somebody else's website that has Amazon ads, it'll continue to display things you, you've already looked at. So it'll personalize those responses. Um, Microsoft isn't alone in creating this super cookie. Amazon's one of them. Um, Apple, basically they want something that'll follow you uh, between devices as opposed to just on your browser so they can target ads to you. Um, basically wherever you are, on your mobile, on your tablet, on your Xbox, you know, ad, they just want ad revenue. So kind of sucky. Um, hopefully it's not 100% true, but I seriously doubt it. And it, maybe it won't come out, but they're sure as hell looking to serve you ads. Um, on to next gen controllers. Um, good news, bad news. Good news is the next gen controller should work for your PC. Um, play, uh, Sony has already revealed that the PlayStation 4 controller will have basic functionality. So expect, you know, face buttons and the control analog sticks to work. Um, the share button obviously isn't gonna work, things like that. Uh, Microsoft said that their Xbox One controller won't work on PC until 2014. Um, but you know, that's not, horrible. Uh, I guess it's good that they're actually working on it. Um, Engadget said that Xbox 360 controllers are not wallet friendly, which is kind of odd considering an Xbox 360 controller is what, $30? Um, and if you already have an Xbox 360 and wired controllers, you can get a wireless dongle for your PC for about 20 bucks. So you're talking $50 if you go wireless and you buy um, a specific wireless controller for your PC. I have two wired Xbox 360 controllers that I got for about $35 a piece when they were on sale. Uh, considering how much we spend on a PC to keep it upgraded and everything like that, my last video card was like 300 bucks. So the fact that $30 or even $50 isn't wallet friendly to Engadget is ridiculous. Um, you know, the next gen controllers are probably gonna be in the 40 to $60 range from what we've seen already. Gen G on uh, pre-release prices, and that's not too expensive. So I, I don't know why they would say that. Apparently they've never um, played a racing sim or a flight sim with a full uh, 
hot splice stick where you know you have throttle with a million buttons and a stick with a million buttons um, you know those can run hundreds of dollars so whatever um, on to headsets the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 are both in a similar boat uh, both consoles will get you a headset out of the box However, your awesome headset that you've been using for either your PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360 or both will probably not work, sadly, with next gen. Um, Sony is pushing out an update to get their Sony-branded Pulse headsets working with the uh, PlayStation 4. Uh, Microsoft went and changed the whole Xbox con uh, port basically it's not a regular headset port it's a data port now so hopefully you'll get some kind of aftermarket dongle um, Astro is working on some kind of update with Sony uh, to help you get your A40s working but those will probably come later don't expect anything at launch to work um, like I said only official Sony Bluetooth headsets are going to work eventually Anything that uses Bluetooth sounds like it's off the table at this point, which is um, kind of sad. Uh, the USB function that the Astros use is uh, being worked on, so that's good, I guess. So you don't just necessarily need an Astro. Um, a lot of Logitech headsets I know have the USB uh, mic function for PlayStation 3, so hopefully that'll work for PlayStation 4. I find this totally unacceptable from both companies. I mean, they're pushing social media down our throats, basically. You know, sharing, achievements, recording video, Twitter, Facebook updates. You know, they want us to share, 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 but yet uh, nobody thought to include current gen headsets. You know, talking person to person, something we've been doing for the last 100 years with a telephone was like too much to ask. I mean, that's just... That's ridiculous. Um, PlayStation Vita owners will get their PS4 Link app in the next PlayStation Vita update. Uh, this just basically is a Microsoft Smart Glass-like feature for the Vita, second screen, uh, updates, things like that, pushing downloads to your PlayStation 4 console. iOS and Android, however, will have to wait till the console launches to get their respective apps. Eh, not a big deal. Um, it's nice to know that they're integrating these kind of things so you can download while you're at work. Uh, Sony has also started pre-orders for their wireless personal 3D viewer. Uh, it's, I wrote a thousand dollars but I hope that's wrong. Um, head mounted display, dual OLED screens, 7.1 surround sound. I'm holding my money for an Oculus Rift HD. I won't be investing in a Sony personal viewer. However, competition is good for us consumers. So, hey, you know, go for it, Sony. Make seven new versions. Um, all I can do is hopefully get a third player in the game, and maybe we'll have a lot of head-mounted displays to choose from, getting us better gear for cheaper prices. And in the final bit of next-gen news, Sony Worldwide Studios boss, Mr. Yoshia, Praised Microsoft for their consumer and um, developer-friendly moves, basically praising their quick work turning around the initial freakout over the Xbox One and backpedaling, which probably cost them a lot of money and a lot of face. Um, but don't expect, you know, a Xbox station or ultimate game station between Sony and Microsoft anytime soon. While he did uh, wish them you know, the best and say that he praises them for their moves. This isn't some coming apocalypse where Microsoft and Sony get together. So it's basically the shaking hands of two boxers or uh, martial arts experts before they kick each other's asses. That's the best analogy I can come up with. All right, now on to more video game news, regular video game news, I should say. Uh, it would seem SNK is trying to pull the whirl, uh, the rug out of Tomo. Uh, they've now told them to cease and desist selling and manufacturing all Neo Geo X accessories, consoles, games. They want to put a stop to it. Uh, this comes out of left field because earlier this year, the two companies basically agreed to extend their 
agreement until 2016. Um, while I think the Neo Geo X is a very niche product, and um, while I want one, it's kind of expensive for what it is. I would rather get a full-blown Neo Geo. Um, I can't really see how this is hurting SNK or how SNK thinks that they basically, um, you know, screwed them over and breached their agreement. So we'll still have to find out more about this as it develops. It's kind of strange. Um, I would think that whoever bought it would be a Neo Geo lover. So that's kind of like SNK shitting on their fans. Um, surprise, surprise, Call of Duty Ghosts will be supporting dedicated servers for everybody. Um, it's not just the Xbox One cloud that makes Call of Duty Ghosts dedicated servers go, you know, round and round. Um, they've said that they're going to get dedicated servers for next gen, current gen, and PC. No word on specifics. I don't know if that means the Wii U will be left in P2B hell. I wouldn't doubt it based on Infinity Ward, but, um, you know, I'm wondering what kind of backhanded back alley deals went on to try and insinuate that only the Xbox One was going to get dedicated servers based on the Xbox Cloud, and then they kind of had to backpedal a little bit there. But dedicated servers are good. We like dedicated servers. Um, it's good to see them supporting it, whether it's getting their arm twisted to support it or them supporting it out of the goodness of their hearts. Um, the community always keeps the game running long after the developer has called it quits and dedicated servers are one of those things you need for a game to have a long life. So it's pretty awesome. Oddly, Mad Cats has joined the Android in your living room crowd. Um, they're releasing the Mojo, a set top box with a controller that runs full Android Jelly Bean. Um, it's going to drop December 10th. It retails for $249. It's a little beast of a box, which runs a Tegra 4, has 16 gigabytes of storage, 2 gigabytes of RAM, Wi-Fi, a micro SD card for expandable storage, and HDMI output, along with a controller. It sounds pretty slick. Um, should make a decent home theater, PC, Xbox Media Center, Android box under your TV. Um, since it's not running anything proprietary, you should be able to download, you know, tons of Android games like Dead Trigger, things like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, a little expensive, but um, for an all-in-one with a controller, eh, not bad. Um, probably the controller is going to be the biggest worry for most gamers, so we'll have to wait for it to drop before we find out exactly how well it fares. Hopefully it fares better than the Ouya controller, which got a huge amount of flack when that came out. Uh, one of the very first games I remember being told I couldn't buy or play is getting a re-release remaster. That would be the point-and-click adventure game Gabriel Knight Sins of the Father. Um, sadly, the original voice work was lost, so the great performances by the likes of Tim Curry, Mark Hamill, uh, Michael Dorn, and more are not going to be in this remastered version. They're going to have to um, go and get a whole new cast of characters, which is sad at one point, um, good at another. You know, it's always be interesting to hear how they uh, redo this classic basically from the ground up now, now that they're not using anything previous. Um, the Dusted Off and Shined Up Adventure is set to be released in 2014. So be sure to look out for it. It is a classic. MM25 Mega Man Rocks is a compilation compilation album uh, by fans and pro musicians alike who love them some Blue Bomber. Uh, there will be 18 tracks that cover a whole swath of games from the Mega Man universe. Uh, basically traditional Mega Man along with the Mega Man X series. It all goes on sale later this month on October 29th on iTunes, Amazon, and other digital music peddlers. Uh, you can take a look at the track list at the Capcom Unity page we've linked. Looks pretty good. Um, really like to hear what they've done with the music considering how many of those original tunes are classics. The must-have game from the Ouya, the Towerfall, is headed to PC come January 2014. Um, it's getting a full Steam release along with a map editor and Steamworks support, which is awesome. That means you can now share levels, create levels, do all kinds of stuff. Um, the game was pretty much 
the reason to buy an Ouya, so it's kind of good and bad uh, that it's coming to PC. I'm sure people who waited for it are uh, really happy. Uh, there's also going to be a few new classes and some new weapons, including the addition. Um, no word on multiplayer co-op, but or online multiplayer co-op, I should say. So you'll probably have to gather your friends around that little steam box that's coming and get on the couch for some couch co-op, which is super awesome. The latest trailer for Blendo Games Quadriletter Cowboy is out, and it has CPUs, hacking, instant ramen, cute robots, and more. Uh, the 20th century cyberpunk game has me super psyched. Uh, I love the art style of the Blendo games, especially the dudes with the cube heads and um, just the way they... Uh, certain things are super detailed in a way, and then other stuff is very low def, so it's I like the... Uh, compare the contrast between both of the styles. Um, you also have a sweet computer and a suitcase you get to do some hacking with. And there is coding from the looks of the trailer, so I hope it's a simple programming language because I really don't have that much programming skills. Um, it's still listed as coming out in 2013. We're kind of running out of time here, so hopefully Blendo gets it in time before, you know, December 31st, but Hey, I uh, rather have a good game with little bugs than a good game full of bugs. So take your time. Um, developer Fulbright is updating their interesting adventure game Gone Home to include a new developer commentary track. So if you wanted even more insight into the very interesting game, um, you'll get that. And thankfully, it's free. It's not some DLC pack that they released where you gotta pay $10 to hear the developer explain stuff to you. So um, good on them, and if you haven't yet picked it up, another reason to pick it up, free updates. The Citizens of Earth Kickstarter is running out of steam. It's up to its final five days of funding, and they're only a quarter of the way toward their $100,000 goal. Now, if you doubted that you were gonna like this Earthbound-inspired political simulator, um, they have a demo, so get on over to the Kickstarter page below, check out the demo, and see if it's actually worth your green. Um, it looks quirky from all the videos I've seen, it looks cool, I know Carrie loves it, I think she even uh, kickstarted it. So uh, check it out, it's good to see them releasing a demo, it's a little uh, late, I guess, in the Kickstarter life to release a demo, and I would wish more Kickstarters would do this, because I'd really like to play and see some of the mechanics behind the game they're trying to make before I give somebody my money, but that's just me. It's funny how NCSoft shut down City of Heroes and now City of Titans has blasted past their Kickstarter goal. Um, their goal was $320,000 and they still have 22 days left to go and they're already past $400,000. So that just goes to show how much people wanted this MMO superhero game to survive and you know I really hope they do double find like money because uh, for all those other MMOs that were shut down uh, hastily when fan outcry was high saying they wanted to keep playing is there anything they could do and companies were like no we're just gonna shut down our servers screw you people well here you go company says screw you people People actually went and made a game, and it's making tons of money. So keep making that money, uh, City of Titans. I wish you well. A new real-time strategy sandbox simulation roguelike on the high seas. Yes. Pirates. Roguelike. It's going to be awesome. Poop decks. Uh, the letter R a lot. If this sounds like a game you want... You should check out Pixel Piracy. Um, you even have a hand in the procedurally generated world of Pixel Piracy where the game asks you a few questions and based on how you answer them, it kind of influences the uh, world map that it generates, which is pretty awesome. You'll be able to put together a motley crew of pirate crewmen. You'll be able to build that pirate ship you've always wanted to build. Um, you know, what more could you want in a 2D side-scrolly pirate game? 
Um, the crew at Solid Dust has even released the alpha version, which is super alpha. It's like version 0.3.2 when I uh, looked it up over on uh, the website. So check it out. It's very early code. It's super buggy. I heard um, if you read the uh, Rock Paper Shotgun review, you'll see that they sent a pirate out to investigate a landmass and the landmass just kind of disappeared. But it's free, it's alpha, it's got pirates, piracy, pixels, I mean, poop deck. It really has a poop deck. They said that there is a poop mechanic where you have to dump poop off the ship to keep your pirates happy. I mean, come on, how can you guys not love this stuff? Poop deck, awesome. Um, if you thought Dungeon Defenders 2 was kind of weird going the p2p moba style you know league of legends wackiness you're not alone um basically developer trendy entertainment has heard your cries and they're now reversing all that it's all swept under the rug uh dungeon defenders 2 will now be like dungeon defenders 1 it will be a tower defense game so yay uh, to celebrate all this, they've released a new trailer, and if you check it out, it doesn't show a whole lot, but eh, it's good. It's tower defense. looks pretty cool. It's still going to be free-to-play, so I'm wondering how they're going to work in the free-to-play aspect. I could see it with P2P, MOBA. You know, you'd be buying some kind of heroes or gold or however, you know. League of Legends works, but with a tower defense free-to-play game, are they going to make you buy towers, speedy upgrades, you know, that's kind of weird. Uh, the game did not change release date, however, so it is still scheduled for a spring 2014 launch date despite all these changes. Maybe they just deleted a bunch of code and said, screw it. Uh, on to releases. Not a lot of releases coming this week. Valhalla Knights for the PlayStation Vita, uh, Cabela's African Adventure for the 360, PlayStation 3, and Wii U, Wipeout, Create, and Crash for the Nintendo Wii, Xbox 360, Nintendo U, Wii U, and Xbox or Nintendo 3DS, and Two Brothers is coming to PC, which I've heard a lot about. I hope to pick it up because it is supposed to be pretty damn awesome. Um, story is supposed to be great that's all for our short show this week uh we'd like to remind you to check out our friends over at startselect.net who have two podcasts sometimes three podcasts every week um remember to check us out on our website at www.weeklygamingrecap.com follow us on twitter at twitter.com slash wgamingrecap if you want to email us something, or you want us to read on the show, got a question for us, or want us to research something, you can always send us an email at the email address, show at weeklygamingrecap.com. And remember to rate, comment, share, and subscribe to us right here on YouTube. Until next week, see you later.